Welcome to Toronto Motorsports Park, where today I'm testing out the new Elantra N. That's right guys, I'm finally back at the racetrack and man, it feels good. It's a beautiful Sunday morning here at TMP and I am really looking forward to ripping some hot laps in this new Elantra N because having spent a week in it, driving it around on the street, I can confirm this thing is an absolute hoot to drive and it really taps into my inner 12 year old. As a matter of fact, let's jump inside and I'll show you what I mean. All right, guys, getting down to business really quick here. This is the inside of the Elantra N, and it's a very pleasant place to be. And my favorite part is a little bit of drama when you fire it up here. It's got a nice bit of burble to the exhaust, even in normal mode. And then if you hit the N button here, the filled in N button, you go into N mode and you get this hilarious flame tachometer bursting at you on the screen here. And I mean, to me, that's just fun. I'm sorry, but if you don't enjoy that, I don't think we can be friends because you are not in touch with your inner 12 year old. And I just love how playful this car is. The, the lengths that Hyundai's N division went to with this car to make it fun, to make it engaging, to make it, um, you know, unpretentious, just built for somebody who wants to go and rip and have a good time. And that really is the kind of driver I am. And I imagine the kind of driver you are too, if you're a, a fan of our channel here. So. By the way, you can get even more uh, information if you jump over here onto this large right-hand info screen and you hit the end mode button here. It gives you a little bit of a end drama on the screen and then you've got all kinds of useful information when you're at the racetrack, including throttle position or throttle percentage, oil temp, engine temp. It even has a built-in lap timer, it gives you a, a tachometer here. And if you swipe right, you've also got a G meter and you can see I could act activate launch control here. So there you go. That's a quick overview of what we've got going on inside here. I should also say that the steering wheel, I believe is a direct carryover from the Veloster N that I tested last year. If you haven't seen that video, go uh, go look at the link at the top right corner. That will be the DCT version of the Veloster N. This, however, is the six speed Elantra N, which makes me very happy. I've got three pedals, I've got a shifter, and although it may not shift, or I may not shift as quickly as a DCT, I'll be more engaged having three pedals to play with and having a, a, you know, being able to select my own gears. I think that really wraps up the interior. Other than I should say these seats are phenomenal. These seats are amazing. They have a lot of bolstering in the back, which is really gonna do a great job holding me in place on the racetrack. Has some bolstering in the bottom, but not so much that it's uncomfortable as a street car. Like I said, I've been driving this car all week and I've been very comfortable in here. I find the suspension to be firm, but, but, but comfortable. That said, I'm used to driving a car on aftermarket performance coilovers, and this is certainly more compliant than that. I find it to be very, very livable as a daily driver. In fact, I really enjoy it as a daily driver, so I don't find the suspension too stiff. I think there's some other YouTubers out there, <clears throat> Mark from Savage Geese, who was complaining about this being too, too firm, but I think that's really more an indication of Mark just getting old and soft. It's too stiff. I mean, not horribly stiff, but it's definitely, it grates on your nerves after long drives. Without more yapping, let's just get out there on the racetrack and give this thing a proper send. All right, here we go. Oh, a little wheel hop, because I'm sending it too hard. The adrenaline is real. And we are getting up to about 15 pounds of boost on the front straight here. And uh, I'm just gonna put a little bit of heat in myself and in these Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's, which are a very sticky 300 treadwear tire. I believe this is the first time Hyundai's N Division has used the Pilot Sport 4 S's. I think the Bloster N DCT I tried last year was on the Pirelli P0s, which in my experience is not nearly as sticky as these Michelins. So we should see some improvement in grip level just by virtue of that. And of course, all of the chassis tuning and really, you know, electronics package tuning that the end division have done on this car. And like I whacked so eloquently about in the Veloster N, the tuning they've done on these end division cars is phenomenal. They've really put in a lot of effort to make this car an absolute blast to drive and really make use of this two liter turbocharged uh, engine's power and torque. And it is powerful and torquey. I believe it's rated at 206 or 276 horsepower and 289 foot-pounds of torque. However, I've seen dyno numbers on these cars and they make those types of numbers at the wheel, not at the crank. So they are very underrated by Hyundai. I think quite a clever 
marketing approach to like uh, over deliver on power and uh, price wise these things are very competitive too this car lists around $39,000 Canadian and in the States it's uh, in the low 30s like $31,000, $32,000 which uh, you know, puts it up against stuff like the Subaru WRX kind of in between the Civic Type R and the Civic Si I think it fills a really interesting niche in the market and especially the Elantra N which you know is a four-door sports sedan and to get something this capable below 40 grand like this thing will put a scare into uh, I don't know, like an E92 M3 or like an S2000. It's it's properly quick around here, and I can tell you the suspension tuning is really good. Like there is just no understeer there, and I'm only pushing like nine tenths right now, just kind of getting up to speed here, and it feels like the rear end is willing to rotate. Like really, no sign of understeer. This is a huge, huge improvement from Hyundai of old, where. You know, I used to test a lot of press cars back in my auto guide days and my modified magazine days. And every time I was in a Hyundai, I'd complain about understeer. I'd complain about, you know, vagueness in the suspension tuning, slushy gearboxes, you know, underpowered brakes. And they've dealt with all of that and more with this car. This is truly, truly a performance machine. It rips, boys. It rips. Makes some sweet burbling noises there, too. And with the torque of this motor, I really don't have to use second gear. I can leave it a third through here, which is nice, and just let the torque do the work. So I'm not having to like really thrash on this the way I would a naturally aspirated car. So yeah, really, let's go down a second here though. And it does rev out well though. I should say that this motor is tuned to make power all the way to redline. A lot of time with turbo cars, they kind of run out of puff in the mid range. But this car makes good power all the way to the red line, which I really appreciate. That, again, kind of gives it that character of being a true enthusiast car. This isn't just an Elantra that they've slapped some lipstick on and said it's a hot boy version. This is really and truly a performance version of this car. It feels really special, guys. just thrashed this car pretty hard for a couple of laps and really if you carry too much speed into turn one she is gonna understeer on you so we're just catching up to a C7 Corvette here which I've got to assume he's either wearing jorts and New Balance shoes or he's on a warm-up lap because he is not going very quick here but the Corvette is a nice color it's actually reminiscent of this cyber gray on the Elantra N here which I really like I think it's a very subtle but uh, still sporty color option. You can also get this car obviously in uh, the end division's signature performance blue, as well as some other more like standard colors, red, black, white, that kind of stuff. So just dispatching Corvettes out here. Come on, end division. You guys are killing it here. You're killing it. Look at the way that Edith puts the power out at turn seven there, guys. As soon as you go to the throttle, it just leaps forward that is impressive very impressive diff behavior wow you can really steer this car with the throttle in a way that you can't in most front wheel drive cars because this e-diff does such an awesome job of putting down the power Woo! i'm seriously pumped on this car guys not the smoothest track in the world so it really does test out the uh the dampers the suspension and there's some heavy braking zones here too which really test the brakes out and you know in years past that was a sore spot for Hyundai's they did not like to be at the racetrack the brakes would get soft but so far I'm about four or five laps into this session and uh, the brakes are holding up remarkably well keeping up with a Mark V Supra here guys so <laughs> Albert Bierman must be happy to see that I know he's retired now but uh, He's really the guy that spearheaded a lot of the, the advancements and changes that happened in the end division and you know made these cars as special as they are and look at this we are right up the back side of this supra here we 
go. Getting the point by from a Supra, guys. Come on! You gotta love that. Smashing curves in a jest does not mind one bit. What a machine! I'm absolutely loving this thing. Wow, guys, that was a lot of fun. I just, I'm so impressed by this Elantra N. What a hoot it is to drive in. Uh, what a cool looking car it is too, by the way. I know I didn't really comment on the, the styling of it, but I really like it. I think it has a lot of character. Most importantly, at least for someone like me, it is an absolute blast to drive out there on the racetrack. Wow, this thing is dialed in at a level I simply did not expect. It is a lot faster than the Veloster N with the DCT, which to me, I didn't expect. If we go back to that uh, lap I did last year in the Veloster N DCT, I did a 122.9 in that car which is about a half second slower than I've gone in an, uh, a new Civic Type R. You know, we tend to benchmark these end division cars against a Civic Type R because that's like the fastest front wheel drive car money can buy. At least it is until today because I just stomped my best lap time in the Type R. The best I ever did in a stock Type R was a 122.2. I just went 121.4 in this thing in my first set of hot laps. If I went out there again, I'm 100% confident I could break into the 120s. That's how dialed this car is. And so much of it comes down to that E-diff. The way they've tuned that ELSD is phenomenal. You can get on the power so early and it just drives you out of the corner. It almost makes the car feel like it's all wheel drive. It has that much traction. It's phenomenal. And this engine, wow, it punches way above its numbers, guys. It is very powerful. It makes a ton of torque and it doesn't get hot. I just did five hard laps and the water temps were still right where you want them. But this thing is really, really well engineered to, to be beat on on the racetrack. And I guess that shouldn't be a big surprise given that the N and N division may well stand for Nürburgring where you know they did a million laps in this car and really got it, got it dialed in for what is the most challenging racetrack in the world. So for it to do five hot laps here around TMP without a hiccup shouldn't be a big surprise, but it's still like just a massive, massive achievement compared to where this company was in a performance sense five or 10 years ago. They have come a very long way. And this to me is now the king of front wheel drive performance cars. You cannot go faster for under 40 grand in just about anything, let alone a front wheel drive sports sedan like this. But wait, there's more. I'm on my way home from the track now and uh, couple of things I wanted to report on. Cruising along on these uh, country roads on my way home here, in normal mode, with the AC on, which I should turn off so we don't hear it, uh, it, it's very civilized. Like, you could commute to work every day in this car and be very comfortable. You get reasonably good fuel economy. I can see right now I'm averaging 9.6 liters per 100 kilometers, which is better than I do in the Flexus. So, man, you really can have your cake and eat it too with a car like this. It has a ton of rear leg room, the back seats are big and comfortable. I mean, this is a true four-door sedan. You can have adults or kids back there comfortably. There's so few compromises with this car and yet the performance level is so very high. So let's consider that my new outro for this very interesting car and uh, one that I've really fallen for. And uh, I have to say, if I was on the market for a sub $40,000 performance car, I don't know that I could pick anything that would turn a faster lap time. Maybe I would still go for the GR86 or the BRZ because I love the, the way you could drive a rear wheel drive car with a throttle, but this car really does let you drive it with the throttle because of the way this ELSD works. So, man, it is a very, very compelling package. So, hope you enjoyed this quick track test. I know I enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching everyone, and we will see you at the track very soon.